definitely I would say yes. Yeah, okay. I started the recording. Thank you very much. Not a problem, sir. You are a gentleman and a scholar. All good in my neighborhood. Just here watching this here basketball game. This is what COVID has turned me into. <laughs> a basketball enjoyer. I've changed. If I rule the world, and everybody. Is that the Lord version? Yeah. Because she sings it at half speed. Uh, kinda. <laughs> well, the first trivia question: What movie did Lord create that song for, or do the cover for? That feels like a. That's gotta be. That feels like a a, a Hunger Games era thing. Lord feels Hunger Games E, and that feels like a Hunger Games E choice. So I'm gonna go with a Hunger Games sequel. Okay, which one? Uh, Mocking Jay Part One. So close. Part Two. Catching Fire. Bam. Catching fire. Oh, uh, <laughs> At least I'm pretty sure it's catching fire. I let me verify that. What are we chatting about here, fellas? Sounds like we were uh, betting on something. Uh, I started saying, and everybody wants to rule the world, but along the lines of the Lord cover, and I asked Nathaniel what movie she did the cover for. I remember he that right. song. Or he got it. It was very close. I remember that song because it plays in Steven Spielberg's version of War of the Worlds. It's playing on a loudspeaker. Ah. Ah. And I always remembered it from that scene. Shout out Tom Cruise. Shout out Tom Cruise. And uh, is that Dakota Fanning? It is. That is, right? Yeah. That's a young Dakota yeah. Fanning. Right? Very yeah. young. Yeah. Yep. Whatever happened to her? Keep, she's still acting. I think she was like What's so this? rich as a what kid, she though. In? She could just kind of do whatever she wants. Last thing I remember her in was uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. She plays uh, a... Oh, she uh, is. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I think she might do TV stuff now, too. Like, for, like, like one of those, like, AMC okay, shows or enough. something. Yeah. Like, I, I swear I remember her being... League, so fair enough. I swear I remember her being on, like, one of those, like, FX or AMC shows about, like, psychology in, like, the 1900s or something like that, you know? Sure. Plus, she's like, my sister's making money now. I don't even have to worry about this anymore. The fanning fortune no longer rests on my shoulders alone. Fanning fortune? Yeah. Because Elf, last thing Elf Fanning from is, is also definitely. very famous as well now, too. Yeah. The last I had no is definitely Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. We're looking here on uh, the old uh, IMDb. On the IMDb. In dubs, yes, sir. Ah, it actually, turns out she's going to be in the Equalizer three, though. Oh, well, there <laughs> you go. I'm surprised they're even making a third one of those. But I mean, isn't that just big. Black John Wick at this point? Is that what they're going for? It is <laughs> absolutely Black John Wick. <laughs> is that what they're they're aiming for? What is? It's, I don't. Th I don't think it's that extreme. <laughs> the equalizer. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I I actually liked the first one. The first one's maybe twenty. The first one's got to be after John Wick. When's the first John Wick? Fourteen? No, twenty like eleven or like or like. I no was, way in hell, bro. Dude, I remember I I was in college still. I was an undergrad, so it would maybe got to be fourteen, fifteen. I don't think it John was Wick. that late. I'm gonna go tw twenty fourteen. Might sound fourteen's nine years ago, boss. Twenty fourteen sounds right. Yeah, twenty fourteen is the original. You're right. You're right. Yeah, Adam was still a uh, adolescence. Okay, when's the first? 14. Yes, I was in the eighth grade. That's crazy. 
Yeah, well, I imagine it, oh, but, the first equalizer is actually 2014 as well. I was getting fucking so, hammered. Was, <laughs> <laughs> Same. <laughs> well, no country for old men. Uh, this week it was 2007, so Adam was seven. Correct. Yeah, I was playing COD Four. An equally violent game. And and are we recording? We are. Yes. Yeah. I can okay. cut it out though. Don't worry. Make sure. We're no, no, no. We we can't. Cool. I'm, I'm just saying is when uh, you mentioned just no country old men in terms of the film that we're doing. I to how many times I always confuse. Yes, there will be blood with no country old men, and I feel like I've said that before on this podcast. But it, that shit is honestly countless times. You know how I know that you drastically different movies though. Blake, you know how I know that you are a horror fan more than anything else, is because what up? the movie title is "There Will Be Blood." But I know that you know it as yes, there will be blood because the tagline <laughs> to Saw 2 is yes, there will be blood. And yes. I remember it on the wow. poster wow. as a fucking Funny kid. Enough. <laughs> yeah. Um but damn, yeah. That's funny. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean though. There will be blood and um no Country for Old Men both came out in 2007, and they were filmed at the same time. I was gonna say, when's when's the release date of that? Yeah. Okay. So at least it somewhat makes sense. Yeah. That I'm well, that like was the big Oscar head. race that year. Was it was it gonna be one or was it gonna be the other? Basically. Okay. Wait, those two movies came out in the same year. Um. Yeah. Ninety nine. If if it's not the same year, it's the one year after. Let's so yeah, there will be blood. Is there? It says 2007. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's kind of crazy. That's funny. Even more funny that the tag line for Saw 2. So Saw 2, 08, 07? No, Saw 2 is like... Oh, 10? No, or way earlier. Like, I'm thinking it's like 05, 06. Oh, so it's before that. Okay. Yeah. You may be right, though, because the first one's... I think the first one's 04. Saw 2 is 2005. Yeah. Saw 4 is 2004, okay. so yeah. So yes, there, there there will be blood. Did it have the that stole its title from a Saw two movie poster? The argument can be made. Uh, I don't know if I watched anything this week. I'm really trying to think. That's okay. I I got a list so. I can get up there. And then I've been thinking about a question as well, too, if we wanted to fill a little bit of time, which I, I can like get to. Like an intro question? Yeah, like at least a little bit, because as I said, I've been sick this week, so I've been watching a lot of other sports, and I've been watching this NBA game. And right. to watch that earlier, they were talking about LeBron. And I was thinking, of LeBron's career, who is his biggest rival? Me. Like when you go down in the history uh, books, like who is because his career has been so long. You, like who is it going to be? Let's, let's save it. Let's save it. Let's save it. I think save once you intro. actually break it down, yeah. Like okay. save it, save it. <laughs> yeah, it's Curry. It's Curry. That's my guess. It's Curry. <laughs> Flag's nodding already. <laughs> save that. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, back row banter. I didn't know if we were starting. I'm ready whenever you guys are. I've been ready for 27 minutes. Excuse me, sir. Eh, it's been like 20. It, my computer was taking a second to to reboot everything and updating stuff. So I lied. I lied. It's been about 20 minutes. Liar. And a liar knows a liar. Call it. Call it. Right. Wait his whole <laughs> life. Get right here. Right now. You got one shot. One, one opportunity. opportunity. To call it. Seize everything you ever wanted. All right. We'll go in three, two, one. What's up, everybody? And welcome back to Back Row Banter, your favorite casual movie talk podcast i'm one of your hosts adam schwartz and on this week's episode we'll be talking about the classic no country 
for old men. But before we get to any of that, I'm joined today, of course, by not COVID free Nathaniel, Nathaniel Gingrich. Uh, what up, folks? I am not COVID free Nathaniel. That is right. If you've seen the movie Quarantine, that is what <laughs> is going on in uh, Back Row HQ this week. It's a quarantine zone. There's no one in or out. Um, is that the one with Dustin Hoffman? The one with Dustin Hoffman? What am I thinking of? Quarantine? Isn't that the... Is that, is that no, am I thinking of the wrong actor or am I thinking of the wrong movie? I think you're thinking of the wrong movie. Quarantine is the one that's the remake of Wreck, where they... Uh, it's like the uh, I am one. thinking of the wrong movie. What where am I thinking of? They're in the Con- apartment building. Contagion's, Contagion's the one with Lawrence Fishburne. Contagion. That's not the one I'm thinking of. There's yeah. one from, like, oh. Outbreak. I think it's Outbreak. Uh, yeah, 95. Yeah. Dustin Hoffman, I was right. With the monkeys? Yes, with the monkeys. Yeah. The first half of that movie is really good, and then it just turns into an action movie. <laughs> For no reason. <laughs> well, standard. Oh, well. But yes, after three years of dodging the vid, I have finally succumbed and uh, can take that black mark off my record. I, I finally came down with COVID, but uh, we're doing okay, folks. We're all good. Ready. Good. Any symptoms at all? Or uh, yeah, I, uh, I did. Overall, it's been a pretty mild case for me. I've been very, very lucky. So worst thing I really had was kind of headaches and night sweats. Um, right. And kind of just a uh, frog, froggy voice and that kind of thing overall. Right. But, yeah, it really hasn't been too bad of a case Good. for me. Uh, so thankful for glad that. To, and yeah, uh, glad to hear you're feeling well. Yeah, um, I'll be all right. But uh, we'll be back at the grind tomorrow. So. Can you hear me? Can you feel me? We gonna be all right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, um, yeah, yeah, we'll be back out there, and uh, hopefully, you know, Back Row HQ will be a happening place once again. Oh, it will be. It it indeed will be. Uh, quoting Kendrick over there, of course, is transponder Ty Tyler Vidalis. Gotta watch out for those things. Yeah, man. You never know the air tags, man. I'll get you caught up real quick. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of beeping going on. Or not. Beeping on one side. How? I mean, I don't know if you guys were alive back. Oh, like, wait, when is this movie based? 1980. So none of us were alive. Okay, so correct. <laughs> How common do you think those kind of we're transponders not, we're not that were? Old. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Very but like, do you, do you think you could buy a transponder like that at Radio Shack? In the eighties, ah, yeah. Could probably like, where get, do you buy one of those things? I think that's that's like where you would go to get the pieces for one. You don't think you? I was I gonna say you you'd probably like, find like a a guy in his uh in his garage going to Radio Shack to get the parts to right. build it. One. <laughs> uh, but I don't I don't think they're they're readily available on right. the on the shelf. Right, right, mm. right. I think you're right there. It's you like big. Big government stuff they're like oh yeah we got these yeah, well, i would assume if you're an organized crime kind of deal you have people you, who can yeah you got you got a guy that's got a you got a transponder guy you got a guy bro you got a guy i think that's part right. of isn't that part of being in an organization like that you got a guy for everything i don't know i've never been in one so i mean yeah i, I don't know yeah. <laughs> allegedly <laughs> alleged facts allegedly. <laughs> Rounding out the squadron, of course, is Big Coin Blake. Blake Holder. Hey, what's going on? Do a lot of coin flipping in your day? Um, no. But yeah, I'll tell you one thing though. So I actually did use three quarters about two weeks ago, and that was the first time I used like the coin stash in my car. No bullshit. <laughs> in, like, two and a half years. <laughs> That's good. You know, I was just kind of like slowly just kind of letting that rack to the side. But as in the drive through, right. my total was like something 80. And instead of giving like a $5 bill, I had four singles. And I was like, I can give you no way. Quarters. I can give yeah. you wow. change. So yeah, in those very, situations, very I, I'm too I'm too panicked and in a rush to consider the fact that I have change right in my center console. Dude, uh, that thing so has I would slipped never... my mind for so long. Dude, I'm with yeah. you. And then for whatever reason, it clicked. I was like, oh, shit, I do have change. Right yeah. Now. So yeah, that was that was pretty cool. Uh, the streets of Columbia do use metered parking, so I actually use the change quite a bit. But I have more time to kind of think to myself, oh, I need to pay for parking, mm-hmm. and I have change. Rather than a drive-thru, I'm just like, here, here's my credit card. I just want to get out of here. 
Give me my food. They don't Hopefully have it's um, right order. Have a good there's night. There's no there's no applications for the parking in Columbia. Like you can like uh there's no like it's it's all Columbia like app. Apple nope. Pay. Uh, oh, there is there is. Okay. But who's got time for all that? Old school. You, know, you just got. What am I going to use these coins for if not for parking? You know. For sure. They're trying and they, to make and a they, they accept Welcome. like uh, nickels and I think down to nickels. I don't think they accept pennies, but you can get like I think it's I think it's ten minutes for a nickel or maybe it's less than that. I don't remember. But they'll they'll accept everything except for pennies, which is nice, you know. Hmm. You can't just only have quarters. Yeah, I don't even I don't even know if the meters in Chicago actually take coins now. No, I'm pretty uh, sure it's all they have. I don't at this think point. so. Yeah. Probably not. Yeah. I, think, I a, think you gotta go up to like the little kiosk thing or you just do it like on your phone. Uh, when it's... when you guys were when you guys were younger, did you guys have like a spot in your house where you your entire family collected loose change. Yes, I did, and that was actually my currency for the summer every year. Yes, uh huh. Ice cream truck came around. You went and grabbed that thing and you just brought it outside to flag them down. For sure. Yeah, yeah. We had a change jar. You, wanted to, you wanted to go see a movie. You have to like spend like t- twenty minutes counting quarters, <laughs> and then and then you like double check because you're like, I don't want to show up and not have enough. Yeah. So once I got old enough, though, my uh, just like walk to like a a bank or a jewel i should say there's a jewel not too far from my mm-hmm. house and kind of like cash it that way but in hindsight that was probably terrible because then i just had all that cash in my hand at like 13 <laughs> and it just went fucking broke in like five days so hey not ideal you made it through though nothing too bad yeah yeah fast yeah. forward a few years I'm, I'm still alive all mm-hmm. as well that ends well what's the what's the score of this nba game right now 106 uh, to 94. Oh, you got it on? Yes. Nathaniel, I heard you were you were uh, lost in philosophical thought while watching some NBA over the past few days. I was, your, yeah, uh, yeah. I've, I've been sitting here, uh, you know, pondering as I've been reduced to watching the NBA as uh, I haven't been leaving the apartment, obviously. And with with LeBron being as big as he is. And for his career having big gone, dude, big dude, yeah, both in size and in, in, <laughs> in cultural size as well, too. Of course, uh, for his career going as long as it has, when it's all said and done, who is going to be like his big rival of his career? And I was, I was posing that question to the more NBA enlightened boys of the podcast. So, uh, Tyler, I think he said he had thoughts already, Blake, obviously. I feel like you will be the most educated on this as probably the one that knows the most about basketball out of all of us. Although, yeah. Adam, you watch a fair amount of basketball, don't you? Yeah. yeah. Um, I keep up. I, or I, I've, I've kept up the, you know, since LeBron's been playing, I've like, I keep up with basketball in like the general sense. I've gotten much more into it this year. And so that's why Blake's probably the better person to answer is you've probably been paying attention longer and more intensely than right. I have. But of course, like I, you know, I know who wins the NBA finals each year and I'll watch some playoff games, but I, up until this year, I barely ever watched regular season basketball. Uh, okay. Only when like Fair the enough. bulls were good and they had D Rose, that would be Fair about enough. it. What do you um, what are you going with, Blake? I'd probably agree with Ty. I think once they go back and actually like look at it when it's all set and done, it'll end up being Curry because he's won four right. rings. LeBron's won four rings, possibly five if he continues playing. Right. So I think that's probably what they'll go ahead and argue at. Um yeah. I think as a holistic approach though, right, it's 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 gotta be Jordan. Like I don't really know who else. Yeah, but he never played against Jordan. Right, I'm saying in terms. I mean, that'll of like, be yeah, that'll be always in the conversation. Right? Oh no, yeah, I'm a, I'm asking Jordan. I'm asking in his in his time. Who's the number two? Guy? Oh, it's got oh man. Yeah, I feel like he, when it's all said and done, it'll probably be Curry just based off the rings. But he did play the same time it's, as Kobe too, right? Like technically, for a little bit, yeah, a yeah, little for, bit. Maybe for Kobe like ten retire. years. Yeah, Kobe retired maybe 2016. Did they ever face off in the playoffs? No, they did not. They had a chance at the finals. I want to say this is maybe like my freshman year of high school, maybe like 09 or something like that. 08, 09, I think they had a chance at the finals. And that was something uh-huh. I remember was really big at the time because those were like the two best players. But right. I think the I think the Cavs got eliminated. If I'm not I, I just searched that up 
They have indeed not. You are correct. They have not played in the NBA uh, finals. They've played 22 times in the NBA. LeBron mm-hmm. James is 16 and 6 over Kobe Bryant. Hmm. Fair. So there you have it. So, and yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. Kobe probably in the later half of those career, his career for most of those games. But I was going to say, so not really a rivalry then. It definitely does seem. So not Durant then either? I guess he would be the other one that I would think about. Yeah. And that's, and that's when I was going to go. I was like, when it's all said and done, it'll probably be Curry based off the accomplishments and the rings. As far as like a talent, I don't know, man. I think you would just have to chalk it up and say it's probably Kevin Durant. It's probably Durant. Okay. Yeah. But it, it's so hard to say that LeBron James has like one rival or one person he had all listed up against because his career at this point, this is so year 20. Man. No one else <laughs> has put, has been playing as long as him, really. And the, especially competing at his level. So he's gone through. He, he, when he started playing, Kobe was in his prime. And now he's he's going through Steph Curry in his prime. He's going through KD. I mean, at yeah, guys have had his prime, full you know, TBD. Exactly, and he's been playing since before they started, and he's still as dominant. Yeah, there's probably uh, coaches close to as dominant as when there's probably coaches in the team. league that have played against him as well too. Oh, there point. are. Well, oh, shit, coach, sure. his his Lakers his, coach he played against. Absolutely. Oh shit! Really? That's hilarious. Yeah, like whoever's coaching Lakers, I forgot his name off the top of my head. Uh, but he he they there was I saw this not on Twitter just this last week. It was it was him uh, guarding LeBron and then him mm-hmm. coaching LeBron. That's it was hilarious. like a side by side. Yeah. So I mean, kind of to your question earlier when you asked me, he's got to be up there in terms of like longevity. I think that was what you asked me. And like yeah. as far as like who's the longest tenured player in the NBA, like I don't know if it's LeBron James all time, right? There may be somebody who is yeah, just some dude. the tenth player off yeah. the bench. Like, you know what I mean? I I I, yeah, I, I don't sure. know, no disrespect to that person. But as far as anybody who's like coined like uh, he's one of the greatest he's hall of fame kind of things of that nature i think it's lebron james by landslide most people you see are kind of capping out at like year 14 which Dude. is still phenomenal but to be yeah. year 20 and still playing as well is like is is ridiculous it's right? insane it's absolutely insane because he's still averaging what did he average during the record season 20 21 i pff, it's probably might even be more than that i don't yeah, know it's probably like 27 but, or something like that yeah but to to, to do that at 38 yeah, in the 20th year of the league like that's that's unheard of because kobe after i forgot what the stat is but i don't know and i don't remember how many years he was in the league for probably around 15 16 i think around there uh, uh yeah i want to say it was nine ninety eight to 2016 so okay. maybe 18 years 18 or so something like but that by, 17, the, by the time he was out of the league i think he was only averaging like I could be getting this wrong, but like it's low, like 13, 14. It's not that much. Yeah. Um, it might be a I little think, bit higher than that. Yeah, it might be a little last high season that, or two. It, yeah, but as far as like the efficiency he was scoring sure. at was nowhere near what it should be. Um, sure. Where he was able just to take a shit ton of shots because the team wasn't good and like he was Kobe Bryant. It's like right. nobody would be like, eh, you should pass the and ball. And he's, back, he's, he's never, right. he's never had any like, like a torn ACL. Or anything like that? No major. That's, that's the thing that I heard about the the scoring record that he just broke. That it's like so hard for anybody to ever break that because for 18 years straight, or sorry, 20 years straight, LeBron has never had a season-ending injury that yeah. has put him out for more than a couple months. Got it. So right. that's why he's had such an opportunity to yeah, keep yeah. scoring so much and to break Kareem's record is because he's played so much and like. You could look at Zion and and say, oh, Zion is scoring, you know, just as fast as LeBron was in his early career, but he's he been out every other two, year. Basically, yeah, yeah, he's out, but he's basically basically been out half the time he's been in the NBA, and at that, you know, at that clip, you can't get catch up like that. Um, and then people were the the analysis I was watching again, another TikTok or something was saying how the right now the person who has the best chance of catching up to LeBron and breaking that of the people in the NBA right now would be Luca. Cause he's still young. He's had a great few first few years and he's, his scoring is, is actually, I think higher than it's either on pace or, or higher than where LeBron was at this point in his career. Uh, it's just a matter of, can you stay healthy for that long and keep up that production that long? And it's just so yeah. hard to do both of those things to stay healthy for as long as LeBron has stayed healthy for consistently. Right. And, not only that, but to keep performing as well as LeBron has been performing that right. consistently. 
Well, and he also has an extra year on most of the guys, too, because he came in at 18 out of high school, right? Correct. Yeah. 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 So, he's so some people like use that as the too. argument against Jordan, right? Because like, I think Jordan came in. He's probably like 20 yeah, or something was, like that, was, right? He so played yeah, in college. Three additional years you're looking at. Yeah, but Adam, to Adam's point, though, yeah, it's definitely on paper the best shot is going to end up being Luca, but it's so early in that, like, that's like a talk about a betting chance on that shit dude like you you're so, going against the odds so crazy. now that he's he's 38 and he's still being you know competitive and all that kind of stuff is there is he is he is he passing the sniff test in terms of the old uh mexican supplements or so that's, uh, <laughs> that's, that's tough my buddy's actually <laughs> has a very interesting take on that where he thinks like eh, I don't know. I mean, 38, right? he's never had a bad injury. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you could probably argue, though, the worst injuries he's had is probably like what's happened probably like two of the past three years, right? There's okay. like a foot, then like a groin or something sure, like that. Yeah, yeah. Put him yeah. out. Each one was maybe like six weeks or something. Um, yeah. He's been so out my a little kind of like brings that up to a point. Yeah. But then I'm also like, I don't know, man. I think some people are just like, just gifted. And like, yeah, some yeah that's true. Destined that's to be true. Very good at stuff. And, I don't and, know, and he is, is what it is. He is dedicated. And well, has stayed dedicated to routine and maintaining his body, diet, sleep. Especially, he's talked about a lot. Like he's his not, sleep schedule is insanely strict. He's not also like he's not gigantic either, right? He's like six eight. So like he's not one of those dudes that's like <laughs> relatively no, he's not gigantic. No, but, but you know what I mean. Still a but you know what I mean. Where he's he's not like seven foot you. dudes who get like hurt right. after like your your body just breaks down. Right. Like you know, there's right. a certain point right, right, right. where like well, you know you just it's diminishing returns and you can only play at that you know level for so long. It seems correct. like he's still he's at the top end of like the hey I am I am athletically gifted and inclined but i'm also a gigantic human like he's got the sliders right. all the way out he's got he's got the perfect balance where like i feel like if he was any taller he's going to be more risk adverse than he is but he's not tall enough to really have the maximum strain he right. could be putting on his body where like if you get any taller than wherever he, i think he's you're right he's six eight or six nine if you get any taller than that that's when you really i think start to put a lot more strain on the body and can't do the things he's able to do and that's where the, the conversation of Victor Wembenyana, who we just found out is going to the Spurs basically because he they got the number one pick, but he's seven one, seven, either seven foot or seven one. Yeah, he's a tall guy, thin guy and too. And well, yeah, very very thin. Uh, but he 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 plays basically point guard. Like he can handle like a guard, but he can he's seven foot one and he can shoot threes and 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 he's got handles and everything. It's just like how do you. How do you guard someone like that? And that's everyone's concern is, you remember, I don't know if you heard of Chet Hol Holmgren, uh, Nathaniel, from no. Gonzaga? No. He's uh, He was like a seven-foot or seven-one center. Might, maybe even taller than that. He might be a couple, like, uh, around there, though. Um, very tall and uh, was pretty dominant in college at Gonzaga, and everybody wanted him. And I think he only played one year there before going into the, the draft, and he got drafted by the Pelicans? No, Oklahoma City. Uh, he's on the Thunder. Um, but he's been injured. Like uh, he, right after he got drafted, he, I think he injured himself and he missed the whole first season. Um, and so that's what everyone's kind of saying with Victor Wembanyama is, will he stay healthy? And people are pretty optimistic about it because he doesn't really have any history of severe injury. Like growing up, these players that are that tall will sometimes get injured or have to sit out and, and, and put a lot of strain on their body just while they're growing up and playing and they're younger in their high school or college days. He really hasn't in his past had a severe injury like that due to his height. So it's going to be a great question of like, can he just stay healthy? Cause if he can, he will be probably the greatest player we've ever seen. And I think it, it's almost a lock. Like he, the, the stuff he does That's is big insane. Talk, big talk. Holy crap. Yeah. Yeah, like every that's that's exactly what people are saying. He's he's an alien. Like he's seven one, I mean, and he, yeah. he can do whatever he wants on the basketball court. Like there's barely anyone who can stop him because you're just yeah, seven one, shooting threes, handles, driving the basket, sure. getting rebounds. Like you are doing everything. So it's all insane. the reason why I was saying like Nikola Jokic is really good. We're not a crazy basketball. Podcast, I was just gonna say yeah, like we're like ranting. I'm, I'm there why for Nikola Jokic is good, right? He has all of those traits. Granted, you would have to see him apply that at like the league level and not overseas because it is a drastically different type of game um but 
he definitely has all those tools at that size, right? Which is unheard of. Like that skill set alone is only matched by mm-hmm. like two, three other people in the NBA. Right. 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 So we'll see. As far as him, I mean, they they say he's the next um like great, the next Destin player, the next LeBron exactly. James, I guess, if you would if you will to say, but I think all of that is just more a testament to like how good LeBron is for like because like oh, LeBron no. came in with like, oh yeah, this is guy's the next Michael Jordan. He's the next best player in the NBA. And like he basically did all that shit. So, like, yeah. how many times do you hear people like, oh, yeah, this guy's going to be the next great? And, like, he turns out to be a good player, right? And he may have a few yeah, how ma- MVPs. Well, or how many next LeBrons are we on at this point? Like, <laughs> Exactly. Right. And then it's just kind of like, eh, it doesn't turn out to be that way. So, yeah, yeah. kudos to him, though. I mean, I'm, I'm rooting for him. Most of the Spurs I am, too. He fucking turns it up because the Spurs are fucking terrible. All the Spurs And Greg terrible. Popovich is a, one of the best coaches of all time. So, Hall of he Famer. should be able to work with him. Yeah. I think anybody could work with that man. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. All right, this concludes basketball talk. This concludes basketball banter. Uh, let's get into what we're watching banter. Nathaniel, I heard you have a long list. Uh, I have a list, yeah. I mean, as I said earlier, I had COVID, so I was um, didn't have anywhere to be, so I might as well watch some stuff. Um Interestingly enough, you may have been able to guess I I started out part of my um my time where I just had anything to watch with an old favorite. So I watched first couple episodes of Evangelion, uh, but actually didn't get much hey. farther than that. Uh, continue watching the stuff that I've been watching week to week, which was the Hajime no Ippo, uh, the boxing anime, Ted Lasso. Caught up on that, obviously. Um, the UFC as well. Um, I am up to date on Succession. Um, Adam, uh, I'm are, not. I figured oh. you may not be. Um, yeah, it's it's been a couple weeks. Yeah, uh, so I, I'm only like two or three behind, and I'll probably catch up this week. Yeah, this was the another big week where everyone was kind of freaking out after this most recent episode where uh, it takes place on election night. Um, so oh, take with that okay. what you will. Uh, about yeah, I that. will. I will take. Uh, you know, if okay. you know Succession, you know. Um, you said that's the most recent episode, like the, the one that came out. Yeah, that was, that was the uh, most recent Got episode. It. The most. And then how many summer. more are there? That was the eighth. So nine and ten, Ooh. I imagine. Yeah. Yeah. I... Yeah. It's a. Uh, it's gonna be. It's gonna be a big one. It'll be interesting. Next are they? Week. Are they? Do you feel like they have enough room to to close it out in two episodes, or are they gonna? I cut it too close. You think? So like. I think they are cutting it close, but I'm beginning to suspect that it's just going to be one of those shows where it's like, and that's that's the end of what you get to see as a viewer. You know that that then uh, and like that goes on like you know your your window into this life has ended, but that doesn't mean that the life has you know that the story's over that kind of thing. Um, you know, yeah. I don't know if it it may just be that you know there may be like background characters that we've. We've just seen the last of their character at this point or something. Um, sure. But I think that show, uh, particularly with this last um, episode, is definitely starting to get into its end game with its characters of where it's going to leave them in ref- in relation to the audience. And kind mm-hmm. of like as and, and where the audience is going to leave and what their feelings towards all of the characters is going to be if maybe, you know, narratively their story isn't quite as buttoned up as uh, right. as maybe some people are expecting or would expect in that sense. Mm-hmm. So, um, But yeah, it's still a great show. Funny every every week and, um, you know, always worth watching. I watched NHL hockey this week, folks. That's how how COVID has affected me. Um, so I watched the Seattle Kraken. Did you watch the Kraken game? I did. Ah. Yeah, I watched. I watched my sure. boys, the Seattle Kraken. Um, he puts my boys in air quotes. Um, who I followed for a whole two <laughs> two weeks. Um, but uh, they they won game six, forced a game seven, lost in game seven. Tough luck. You know, it was a, it was a big season for us. But second year of the league, see where we go from here. Um, uh, what else did I get to? I watched all of Star Wars Visions season two. Ooh, which Tyler? I see Tyler moving. Yeah, Tyler, have you seen any of that yet? Yeah, I uh, I brought it up last week. That, that's uh, that's what I, I thought. Started. Have you finished it? 
Uh, no, I think, what is there, nine episodes? Indeed. Yeah, I think I got like one or two more left. Early favorites? Um, I'm a really big fan. It's hard. I think I like season one more. Yeah. So far. Okay. Um, I think just the the storylines are just a little bit more in line with my style. Okay. Um, I haven't like overly connected with any episode yet to where I'm like, I need this. Like, I need more of this. Everything's just Fair been enough. kind of like, yeah. It's I'm in I'm in the fifteen twenty minute range. It's cool. It was cool. I don't need to like go crazy i think it was maybe the first one with like the the artwork i thought that one was sick yeah yeah with the little circle drone i really liked the um the dancing the dancer one where they're the theater and they're the group of spies Mm, Um, yep i think i i think i just finished that one or maybe one more after that but yeah that one that one was cool too that one and then the final one is amazing i think as well too but I don't know if, if for anyone who's listening that doesn't know Star Wars Visions is this anthology series that Disney has started that's on Disney Plus that is nine episodes I think both seasons that are non non canon so they are literally just set stories set in the Star Wars universe that could be using anyone with any characters none of them are like the Skywalkers or anything like that um and they've selected nine different animation studios to make these ones the first set first series i want to say was all japanese animation studios the second series has been different ones from around the world and like this is all i want star wars to be in my opinion (laughs) like the like from the designs are so much cooler like the I, i i don't know i don't know what it is i just think it's so cool to see all these different stories that are like don't have to follow any strict lore or anything like that there's just people playing in the toy box in with different styles and it's awesome and um yeah i'm i'm a big fan of all of these kind of like different ideas even in the ones that like i don't think work as well or just like plain ripoffs of other movies like it's still cool by me um there's a really cool one I think on this one on uh like that was from an Irish studio that was uh like a almost a black mirror level kind of twist in the end where you think that the kids are going and like fighting to preserve or or to to help one side and it kind of flips on the head of who's helping who and all that kind of stuff it's a uh, I don't know. I just think these are really good, and I like the I love the short story style format. Um, I think that works really well for Star Wars in particular. I said that really were Star Wars, um, <laughs> but yeah, in a world where like a lot of times storylines are spread out over ten se- ten episodes on a season because we need to make a Disney Plus order. Like it's pretty cool when you just have really awesome storylines set in a whole universe that are nine minutes long like tyler was saying earlier so um behind that in uh movie news i watched prometheus and then followed it up with alien covenant um so someone brought up the other day about how those movies are um really interesting to look at from like an ai perspective particularly with how the world has been freaking out about AI recently over the last few years with like the main, well, there is a main character in all of the, in both of those um, series that is a robot as well too. So it's been uh yeah, it was interesting to go back and watch both of those. I still think Prometheus is the better movie kind of by a pretty large margin, but alien covenant Prometheus is awesome. Yeah. Alien covenant had some cooler moments in there as well too. I think. Um, I just, I, I was watching that movie and was remembering being like, why didn't I like this movie very much? And then I remembered that it did that classic thing that movies were kind of obsessed with for a little while where it just like had the start of the movie as a webisode or something or like gave away a huge plot point just in the trailers. 
And I was just like, what? Uh, are you talking about uh, Prometheus or? No, Covenant. Covenant. Alien Covenant. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, okay, okay. So, um, yeah. Uh, but really cool to rewatch both of those. Would uh, definitely want to get Prometheus on the podcast soon, I think. Um, Prometheus Fire. Continuing. Yeah. It's, it's now on the short list as well. Good. I'm glad to hear that, boys. Continuing my uh, Paul Verhoeven filmography uh, journey that I talked about a couple weeks ago, I think. Or maybe it was like a month or so ago uh, when I was talking about like Starship Troopers and um, Total Recall as well as RoboCop and that kind of thing. I got to Showgirls this week, which, Adam, you're probably too young to remember. I don't know if I've ever heard of that. Uh, yeah, so this was like... This was the movie that I, when I remember growing up, was like the joke answer for like the worst movie that was ever made. Like that was got like a theatrical release kind of thing. Um, uh, guess where it's streaming? It's on Tubi. Yeah, that's where I found it. <laughs> it's yeah. on Tubi. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but Box like, Tubi. yeah. This imagine imagine the guy that directed Starship Troopers made Black Swan, but with strippers, and that's Showgirls. <laughs> so huh. if you Adam, can... have you seen Black Swan? <laughs> I've not with seen Natalie Black Portman. Swan. No. Mm. So yeah, if you if you guys can wrap your head around that whole concept, that is Showgirls, and it's awesome. Like <laughs> it's insane, but it's awesome. Um so yeah, that was like Adam, the only way I can describe it to you is like, you know how like the live action Avatar The Last Airbender was just the butt of everyone's joke for like the longest time where it was just like, right. this is the shittest movie that has ever been released in mainstream. <laughs> That's what yes, Showgirls was for a long, long time. And okay. um, yeah. Quite, is, it, is it quite on the level of like The Room? No, well, that's like, I, so I, th plane. I think that's the thing. I think looking back on it like now it's like a it's about women and it's about stripping and it's about how women are victimized in the stripping profession which mm -hmm. you know is not a fun parable for mainstream america to swallow but there right. you go uh and then secondly like <laughs> the main actress in it is um definitely she's acting she's acting so hard and so that's like Got definitely it. something that you know can be uh you know rub people the wrong way as well too and then like the other thing is just like the female characters in it are pretty amoral and just like kind of awful to other people and like i could definitely see too how at the time like everyone was just like no these women are evil and whatever and they're just being mean and it's stupid and mm -hmm. blah 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 so anyways um yeah it's awesome you should watch it god bless it's Tubi. awesome okay it's so yeah like I don't, like, <laughs> After all of that, I was not expecting you to end it with it's awesome. No, it's sick. Yeah, it's like I said, okay. it's it's Black Swan with strippers. Like it's it's cool as okay. hell, and it's Paul Verhoeven. So he's like he doesn't care. I, I am a fan as a, based off of Starship Troopers. Yeah, I think don't it, have much else. It, it's again, it's it's an NC seventeen movie. Like it is just like random, just blase nudity throughout the whole thing. And I think that's kind of a weird market or part of it that like just is a is a is a valuable and useful market and like it, it is out there as an existing as a rating but is just box off of poison no one will ever go see an nc-17 movie even though there might be a reason to make an nc-17 movie or set it with an nc-17 rating um and yeah i don't know i think it's awesome go see it watch it on tubi check it out folks right. um last thing i got to besides no country for old men was a documentary called enron the smartest guys in the room uh this is from 2005 i want to say um and i remember it being at like at the time when i kind of started paying attention more to movies as like the documentary that was the big documentary that everyone was talking about you know it was like the one that um you know i'm pretty sure it won the oscar that year and it basically tells the story of the company enron which um when I was growing up was like our biggest kind of company financial scandal. That, scandal. Yeah. It was the biggest collapse kind of big thing before, you know, the financial crisis one, two, and three or whatever you want to call them at this point. Um, and yeah, 
highly recommend that documentary because it will make you realize that um, the economy is a scam, <laughs> and it has been oh, for realized. the last it has <laughs> been for the last twenty years, and um, and it will not be going back. And um, anyone who tells you that they're making money off of their, some new revenue stream or something is lying, and they're all lying, and um, they're the worst. But really, go watch it. It's very interesting, and it's kind of like it, it, you see the blueprint for like all of the things that have come out now, like your your WeWorks or your Theranos or your kind of all these big financial tech uh scandals where they just promised something that they didn't have and tried to cover it up with other things that blueprint's Sweet. written by these guys uh now and um yeah it's really interesting to see how they tie it in with you know the little guy and the real world effects of all their choices and um you know it's depressing but it's good so uh can recommend that i want to say that was on amazon prime uh, that i caught that one so other than New Country for Old Men, that is what I've been watching. Blake, what have you been watching? Yeah, uh, not that much. So we definitely have a, a shorter list than that. Um, honestly, I've been watching a ton of the NBA playoffs. Um, as you guys know, I'm actually off to Denver on Thursday to watch the game. So that'll be cool. That will be cool. Um, yeah, Excited so honestly, yeah, man. So yeah, that, that'll, that'll, be, that'll be sweet. But honestly, movie-wise, I haven't watched much. I've uh, mentioned last week I have started Snowfall again, so I'm now about to finish. Uh, I'm in like halfway through the second season, I want to say, on that. Um, so that's pretty interesting. I know they just finished the actual season or the actual series finale, season six, I think just ended on Hulu within maybe the past month. So I've been gearing up on that. Actually, some of my cousins were talking about that on Mother's Day. And they asked me how far along was I in Snowfall because when I last saw them on Christmas, they asked me and I was on season one, and they all booed me when they when I told <laughs> them I was only on season two. Uh, so, uh, rightfully so. Um, outside of that, uh, I somehow came across. I didn't somehow come across. I was on Tubi looking for something to watch, and I came across the American Pies. So for okay. some reason, I watched <laughs> the first three American Pie films. Um, all three kind of like, well there's more than three i think there's five okay yes but i, I but just, just yeah, was I watched, it one I sitting the first three no god yeah, because no, it's is... it's american pie and then american pie two and then it could jumps to american pie wedding right yeah, uh yeah is i thought the third one was naked mile i could be I was going to say, do do you count spinoffs and everything at this point, too? Because there was a ton of those as well. Yeah. It kind of became like National Um, Lampoons, where it was just basically they released one every year where it was just the same movie, but they just different titles. Uh, So, yeah, that was... um... That was mad goofy though. So like over a span of three nights, I kind of just had like some BS (laughs) running on Tubi for background noise. Hilarious. Um, yeah, those are funny. Honestly, first time I've seen those in a very long time. That stuff is like the epitome of like my like middle school sleepover with friends. And it's like, hey, like, do you yeah. want to watch a movie that involves girls? And it was we like American maybe, Pie. Maybe catch on. a boob. You yeah, know yeah, for sure, for sure. So yeah, that was like definitely those those days. Uh, so that was really funny to watch some of that. I was like, oh, this movie's hilarious. And I actually remembered way more of it when I was watching it than I thought I did. Um, so soundtracks are sick on those, especially for like the era that we were in it was just like like you any any song that plays on those movies you're like oh fuck yeah i remember this song (laughs) for sure and the first one i think was i think was 97 or 98 so i mean obviously i was young at that time though the first time i watched these it's probably like 2006 the first time i watched any of this stuff so um yeah yeah good times good times on that and then outside of that i got to uh no country for old men so that's one that's been on the short list for some time, I could imagine. Uh, I would I would bet north of a year. It has I think been. been on the short list, and yeah. I think we finally uh, finally got it on here. So that's all I got. Uh, Ty? Uh, I did get around to some Star Wars Visions, as we said. I think I only have one or two more episodes to go. It's not more than that. I know that for sure. So definitely uh, 
looking forward to the end. Uh, like I said earlier, I haven't like overly fallen in love with anything yet. So um, we'll see if maybe uh, the last couple episodes will uh, will give me something good here. So I'm, I'm hoping. But it's been great. Just kind of, you know, going off what Nathaniel said. Um, it, it is really fun to just not play in canon and kind of letting the universe do whatever it wants and having other people have that input um, as to where they want to see that universe go versus just, you know, kind of following the, the Lucas kind of train. Obviously it's still under all that, but it's just cool to see other people's ideas in that universe. Um, So very, very fun to watch. I still think at the end of all this, I will like season one better than season two, but it's my, it's my opinion. We don't really give a shit what you think, but I'm telling you for like hit for hit on this guy, we've had like the five coolest Sith designs have all come out of star Wars visions. And I'm going to, and like, I, I, it's, it's crazy to me that they haven't had used more of that stuff or anything like that at this point. Like there's just been so many cool styles and and just different you know flavors of the universe that we've seen in here already yeah i i don't know if we ever will unfortunately just because this isn't in canon so they might just like everyone will be like oh they fucking took it from that (laughs) and you know like how star wars fans can get bro like i know that's the thing and i think that's why i like this so much is that like it i just know that they are going to 100 percent. they can't complain about these because they are just out of the out of the way, so yep. it's like finally Star Wars can just tell a good story and give it cool flavor and not worry about it. And I think that's why, like you know, for me, this is what I want. But uh, I agree. Also, the best the best part of it was the in the one that's made by the guys that made Chicken Run. Um, the like the it's like the pod racer or the racing uh, episode when the rich people pull up and their little laser pops up and it's just a tiny death star oh yeah, yeah, yeah. i know yeah, yeah i know it's what you're talking about the one about the mom or whatever yeah 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 it's the chicken run yeah. it's like the chicken yeah. run episode but yeah they pull up and they're like they have like a little like laser pops up and it's just yeah. a tiny death star <laughs> yeah i did see that that was funny um Anyways, continue with what you're watching. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, Visions is cool. I hope that's something that they carry on uh, for sure because it's it's a ton of fun, especially when it gets to compete with something like Love, Death, Robots. Like, yeah. so much fun, kind of in that same vibe. Um, so, yeah, definitely keep going with that, please. Uh, I got around to... Uh, well, so a couple, a couple shows that Leah and I got into. Obviously, we're still kicking around Yellowstone. Mm. um i literally get home i put my boots on uh put my hat on and you know we're we're on the ranch so uh i have a ton of fun with that button down your flannel <laughs> and <Yep>. uh, <laughs> shine your belt buckle <laughs> yeah i'm just i'm just spitting chew all over the house leah's yeah. fucking pissed there's a, there's a spittoon <laughs> So yeah, that's uh that's been fun. It's actually a really good show. Um I've I've been having a ton of fun with it. There's a shit ton more than what you probably think. Yeah, there's like uh, three series of it now, right? There's there's three time periods, three different shows. Well, there's uh I'm we're only in the second season. Um but I think there's four right now that are that's available. But I mean like just the just the overall storyline mm. it's just like i i was not expecting any of this and uh yeah there's there's a lot so it's it's been a lot of fun though so it's a recommend for me for sure if you want to start something another show we got around to it's been out for a while but it got a new season and we all if you know carolia you know carolia and uh it's queer eye so we've oh been boy. Uh, Yep. So we've been uh, watching the makeovers that the 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 boys are doing. They're in uh, New Orleans, Nolens, Nolens, uh, this time around. And uh, so yeah, you know, some of it's very very heartfelt. Uh, you know, they they help people out, and you know, they just try to live a better life. And 
it's cool. It's whatever. It's it's a lot of fun to watch. Those makeover, you know, garbage TV shows, like they're just they're fun to watch sometimes. So, and uh, Queer Eye is definitely definitely up there. I feel like that's the um, the least uh, offensive out of all of those ones, isn't it? Like the Queer Eye is like, yeah, I can. I, I don't have any problems watching that. It's a guy who ends up happy at the end of it. Fair yeah, most, sometimes they're not even they're not all dudes. Right. Yeah. Um, of course. Yeah. They did like they did a frat house, and I was like, "What the fuck?" I was oh, like, "Okay, fun. cool, whatever." <laughs> so, it's but but yeah, you know, it's just it's one of those you know it's one of those things. It's just it's fun to watch. It's garbage TV. Deal with it. And then I got around to a back row banter favorite. Uh, it was it's uh, on it's on the entropy list. It's relatively can we, can high. We guess. Can we? Yeah, guess? yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right, do we get any more context? Sorry for cutting you off. That, that's, um, that's a little big. <laughs> it's in the top 20. Oh, man. Um, Green Knight. I'm, I'm not going to look. Let's, let's not look at the list, team. Let's see what we can bet on here. Your bet is Green Knight, Adam? No, I take it back. <laughs> top 20. Pod right. favorite. I feel like most of the let's, movies. Let's, in the let's top get three questions. Are pod let's, favorites. Let's, yeah, Green let's room. Three questions. Green room. That's my final answer. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Nathaniel. Nathaniel, oh, do, you, do you want to phone? <laughs> that's, do that's, you want to phone a question in, or you? Or that you is gambling? just not one that Tyler would choose to rewatch. Uh, I'm trying to think what's in the the top twenty. My immediate answer actually was District Nine. Um, as mm. not the top 20. Not so close to top 20. But I think, I know that's where I was. When he said it was a pot favorite, <laughs> that was like, oh, I bet it's something like, that's a Tyler favorite, I know. Um, top 20? I don't know, bro. Uh, the, uh, go in your head, go in your balls. Arrival. Blake? Ooh, fuck. Um... I feel oh, like Jurassic I know what Park it is. is too close because we've did that recently, right? I that know what been, it is. That happened last summer, I think. So I feel like it's not that. It's got to be. I don't know if Starship Troopers is in the top twenty, but that would be Tyler's go-to. That is a good one. Is it? That's not it. It's not in the top twenty. Okay. I think I know. Can I? Can I change my guess? I don't know. I'm, I'm going to gamble. Be the final I'm going to gamble Jurassic Park. <laughs> Go ahead. I think it's prisoners. That's it. <coughs> what is it? It is arrival. Damn. Oh, good guess. <laughs> and we haven't even talked. I'm very impressed, Nathaniel. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, you know, gun to my yeah. head, gun to my balls. I just had to I had to feel it <laughs> to through it there. Out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> ESP. You were onto something with the District Nine, though. I, like you were in the same you ballpark, know, it was. You know it, I, mean? I felt sci-fi. I felt sci-fi yeah. coming through on the other side. For so. sure, for sure. It was just like it's been like kind of like a colder week, mm -hmm. like kind of rainier. So prisoners was actually a, a good guess as well. Yeah, um, that's something that you know but, is a very uh, weather weather dependent movie. <laughs> no, but see, I, this was similar. I think this is similar to why I went with Prometheus as well too. It was a big. It was a good big ships week overall so yeah. yes yeah, yeah, it, yeah it is similar to arrival there um i feel you but it, i you guys know me i love my youtube prime and uh it just showed up as as one of the free films that just got added so i was like Ooh. no ads uh, youtube's yeah. easy for me to consume whether i'm like at work or here for while sure. i'm making dinner so it just uh it took me probably about mm, maybe two separate little sittings to kind of get through it maybe three i might have caught like 15 20 minutes at work but um but yeah it's, it's the arrival and it's uh it's great yeah that's one that was uh you mentioned it being <laughs> on the interview. you said it was in the top 20 for that might have been like within the first 10 movies we did i think it was so that's been a one. long time it's i don't think there. i've even rewatched it since then to be honest with you so i mean that's that's i probably two, haven't watched years. it since we put it up yeah so it was it was due for sure. R.P. Abbott. R.P. Abbott. Indeed. What was so, the other uh, alien's name? Costello. I'm sorry. I believe you said Costello because I think that's correct. 
but what I heard was Gustavo, and I was like, I don't think <laughs> I think you said Costello, correct? I did say Costello, but okay. um, Gustavo <laughs> is the third brother, who is my favorite. <laughs> Uh, he was on. He was on the the ship over uh, I- Italy. Maybe? No, yeah, you, uh, okay. you, just, you didn't see Gustavo. He was he was <laughs> hanging out in the back. He's like the third head on King Ghidorah. He's just I like just, he's I he's a little imagine, different. <laughs> I just imagine one of the one of the creatures like with all their hands, and then like it just like tapers up towards the top. But he's just got like a fat like mustache. <laughs> yeah, just yeah, no, a hundred percent. That is exactly what I'm thinking. Well. He's got the Groucho Marx glasses, nose, mustache yeah, combo. Exactly. <laughs> so funny. other than that, that's all I got. Killer movie. Um, love the shit out of it. Uh, but yeah, that's all I got. Uh, Adam, you're all that's left, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, I wish I had things to what put you been on. Getting into? Uh, moving on with my life, I don't know. <coughs> um, wow, this just got deep. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I haven't really been getting into much. I've been just enjoying my time in uh, yeah, while it lasted. As you should. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah, for real, I don't think I watched anything. It, this last week has been hanging out with people and then moving out and then driving home and uh, crying. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I'll get to more things this week. Uh, I've been watching a lot of basketball and me and my buddy's been playing. Uh, we've been playing MLB The Show recently a little bit. We've been doing some home run derbies. They're really fun. We just go to Coors Field. Uh, so it's a low alt or high altitude, and we just crank like 500 foot home runs in a home run derby. It's so much fun. As long as it's not Bud Light Field. All right, man. What oh, Bud Light Field is that? <laughs> I don't even know if that, I honestly there, don't even know if that's be, a field. It'd be Bush field. Stadium. Yeah. No, the closest what, what, thing to that would be Bush Stadium, where the Cardinals play, because uh, Bush ah, makes that's Bud Light. I, was like, I knew it was B or something in, in yeah, St. Louis. There's okay. there's Bush. Just another reason why St. Louis sucks. <laughs> But the one thing I did watch, somehow I got it in right in the wire, uh, is uh, No Country for Old Men. So welcome, listeners, to our main review segment. Nathaniel, if the listener here is new, maybe they've just forgotten. Can you give them a rundown of how that good old review segment works? Uh, yeah, if I had to, if I had to, you know, condense what the how the review segment works into some sort of rundown style format the rundown would be something Mm -hmm. along these lines uh it is split into two sections there's the non-spoiler section and then there's the spoiler section and in the non-spoiler section you know we'll talk about uh the movie's imdb page who wrote it who directed it who starred in it uh go around the squadron see what we feel about the movie has to be a yes or no there is no nuance on the internet would we recommend this to uh to you folks and uh, then we're going to go deeper into it. I'll play a spoiler noise. If you don't want to have anything spoiled for you, uh, go ahead and back out. But uh, do come back later after we've talked about our deeper thoughts on the movie or any big plot twists slash spoilers. And uh, see where it ranks up on our entropy list, which is our big list of everything we've watched on the podcast ranked. With that being said, Adam, tell me about this No Country for Old Men. I would love to. It's a fair country, of course, uh, released in the year. 2007 good old what would that be 16 years yeah something like that my math my math corrects uh rated r definitely rated r with a runtime of two hours and two minutes and an imdb rating of 8.2 out of 10 directed and written by ethan and joel cohen uh this is a cohen brothers film of course how where is this where is this chronologically in not, I guess, not the 2007, numbers, but in their discography. <laughs> yeah. How, what number is this? Uh, um, I don't know how many it is for them overall. Okay. Um, I think it's pretty much in the middle at this point. They're still pretty consistent. It's kind of every year or two, they're kind of doing something. They're not always yeah. the biggest movies in the world, but they're always doing something. Let's see if I can find out quick on IMDb. This is, oh, this is pretty far down there. Yeah. They've got quite a few before this. I was so. say, they've, they've been yeah. around for a bit. Yeah, 84 was their first one. Is that Blood Simple? It, it is. Look at you go. I locked that. Uh, I locked <laughs> lock, Locked in. First you got, first you got uh, Everybody Wants to Rule the World from Catching Fire. <laughs> well, you were close enough where I'll give it to you. 
and now you got that one. Um, and it's also based on the novel by Cormac McCarthy. Mm. Uh, starring, this is a pretty pretty solid main line of the cast. Uh, we've got Tommy Lee Jones, Javier Bardem, Josh Brolin, Woody Harrelson, and Kelly McDonald uh, is where I'll probably end that list off at. Uh, is this a debut for Tommy Lee Jones and Josh Brolin? As in like a Coen Brothers debut? I'm sorry, as in an Entropy List debut. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I was like, I know we've reviewed way too <laughs> way too much knowledge of this topic for him to think that's a Tommy Lee Jones. <laughs> no, no, I know Tommy Lee Jones has been in much more than just this before this. But I know Javier Bardem was in Uncharted as the villain, if I'm not mistaken. Was he? I'm pretty Did sure really? him. No, it was now. Antonio Banderas. He's also in Dune. Ah, uh, damn it. You're right, it is Antonio uh, Javier Bardem is in Dune, though. That is true. He's in, yeah, he's in Dune. That's all I know. Okay. Um... Woody Harrelson Brolin. been Brolin's on there a couple times. Brolin well. is in Dune. Well. Isn't doing oh, right. yeah, I yeah, about yeah. I, did, I didn't, even, didn't even put that together. But Tommy Lee Jones, have we seen any Tommy Lee Jones here? I don't know. So I'm looking at this. Also, Brolin is Thanos. I don't know if we have any Avengers stuff up here. We don't. He might have popped up in like a flashback yeah. sequence in yeah. one of those movies, and they credited a, him for it, but I don't America. believe... You know, I don't. I think this is our first uh, Tommy Lee Jones. There you go. Not seen anything. So welcome, Tommy Lee Jones. You're now on the most coveted list in Hollywood. Just kidding. Uh, the IMDb summary reads as follows: Violence and mayhem ensue after a hunter stumbles upon a drug deal gone wrong and more than two million dollars in cash near the Rio Grande. That was weird. I just paused. Violence and mayhem ensue after a hunter hunter stumbles upon a drug deal gone wrong, and oh, I see, and more than two million dollars in cash. Yeah, that was just weirded really weirdly. Uh, bad IMDb summary. Bad um, IMDb summary. I mean, I guess as far as like the plot goes, it's okay, but um, I don't like how confusing that was. Maybe it's just me. It's been a long week. Um. So, whose first time was this? Anyone? This is mine. But so, yeah, I figured Adams, obviously. Blake, was this your first time that you've seen this movie? No. I was going to say, your dad's got to... He had sure. to have shown you this at least a decade ago. Minimum. Yep. <laughs> and I want to say, you're about right now. Granted, this is probably only the second or third time I've seen this movie. But it's definitely been, I'd probably say, like 12, 13 years since I've seen this. And it was actually with my dad. At home on a couch. Love it. Um, Tyler, how many times, or you've seen this, obviously? Yeah, I've seen this a handful of times. I don't mm -hmm. think it's in the double digits, but <clears throat> definitely uh, introduced by my father, and then uh, Justin and I have watched it a couple times, and then I've even, uh, I think I've watched it by myself maybe once or twice before this, and then right. I did this one. I bet it's, I, I, I bet it's probably like the seven, eight mark, somewhere in there. Gotcha. Does this mean I go first since it's my first time? Yeah, run it. Um, I have mixed feelings. I think Overall. that's I think that's pretty pretty on par with what most people might think with their with their first feeling. Right. Um, and I and I kind of understand stood that watching that is like I feel like I'm there's something I'm missing that maybe everyone else has gotten behind that I have not after since like people can go back and rewatch this or, or maybe around the time it came out, there's more around it or whatever the case may be. I feel like I'm missing something that will flip a switch for me. That being said, even without that something, um, I do enjoy it. Uh, it's definitely a different way to tell a story than a traditional film like this would, would go. Um, and I kind of applaud that for it because it, it does it very well, even though it's different um, and not everybody will like it. It does it very well, um, but it does leave me not satisfied, um, which is probably pretty obvious if you've seen the movie as to what I'm talking about. Um, and I think that's, again, kind of 
I go back and forth on whether I like that or not, and I can go into more on that in spoilers, but I would say overall I enjoyed it, but one of the things that's just is missing for me is, like, this has been a movie ever since it came out when I was younger. I remember my brothers talk about No Country for Old Men, and this was, like, a movie I definitely couldn't watch and all this stuff, and so, uh, and it's a movie that keeps getting, you know, it's been talked about since it came out um, and is referenced quite a bit and all that, and uh, I, do, I just don't know if what I'm missing as to why that is personally um and so maybe nathaniel can enlighten me in in the spoiler segment um of the cohen brothers films i've seen i've only other i've only i let me look at that list really quick i might have only seen i've seen inside lewin davis and that might be it yeah i think that's it which is unfortunate um i would probably say i kind of like that movie a little bit more honestly but um I don't, I don't have a lot of uh, reference for the Coen brothers at this point, so I can't speak to it specifically too much. Um, yeah, I, I would say I'm a recommend. Like, I did enjoy it. I just, I, I, I wanted to enjoy it more, and I'm hoping someone can tell me why I should. Yeah, that's fair. I think um, there are, there's there's something always to be said for when things have large expectations and you're trying to view it for the first time like mm-hmm. years later and you're not part of that first wave sure um so yeah i mean i i, I definitely hear you on that because to your point from your brothers probably just from things you see online internet culture friends us it's definitely a movie where everyone's like oh, oh this movie's good this movie's good and then you watch it and like you have this almost unrealistic expectation that like a movie can't really meet you know, so I mean, I, I hear you right. on that. Um, it's kind of as far as my two cents. Uh, like I said, this is probably my second or third time seeing it. Um, definitely first time in north of 10 years. And um, this movie's fucking awesome. So I, I like this movie a lot. <laughs> it was basically the same movie I thought it was. You know what I mean? Um, and just kind of, uh, it's good. One, I, I like the setting. Um, of like that El Paso, Texas, deserty area, um, which also I think Sicario, Sicario actually takes place in the same uh, town, which also has Josh Brolin. So he's a uh, he's an El Paso native now at this point. Um, but yeah, o- overall I, I like it. I'll keep it brief. I would certainly recommend. Um, I want to say I want to say this one best pitcher at the time too in like 07, 08 or something of that nature. Um and I know it was it was it was definitely up there in the running like that Daniel mentioned between this and there will be blood. So um yeah, all around all it's it's kind of hard to to dibble dabble around it without necessarily discussing like what's going on. Um but yeah, once we can kind of get in that I'll have some more thoughts, but yeah, I I highly recommend this movie for anybody who is into like drama thrillers any type of that the scene of kind of like the it's basically like a i don't know like a like a wild wild west type movie type thing anybody who's kind of into that i think this will be right up your bag so i'll pass it to i'll pass it to nathaniel yeah uh i remember this one uh, this is i think my third time watching this movie um overall um I remember when was the last time you caught this though, real quick. Probably two or three years ago, because I remember when I oh, wow. when when this yeah when this originally came out in two thousand seven this this year this particular crop of movies was the time where I do remember being like these are adult movies that I'm supposed to like because all of the adults that I respect like these kind of movies, <laughs> but I don't get why they're good yet kind of thing so far, you know. Um, so. I saw this one in 2007. I want to say I didn't watch it again until maybe four, yeah, two or three years ago or so. Four years ago is the max. Um, and by that time, you know, obviously I had a lot more schooling since then. And I, I, I do, you know, uh, think it is it is pretty great and a really good, um, you know, representation um, of kind of this... I think the Coen brothers in particular in a way similar to Scorsese kind of before them or even 
Lucas and Spielberg, you know, they're they're tapped into a certain Americana that it that is like is is not often showcased on in film uh or, or in in a film medium like when they pick characters as as kind of background actors there's never any part of me that's like oh yeah there's a there's a there's a character actor that i know that's popped up in this movie and you know it's good to see them again it's like oh there's someone from west texas that they got to come out and somehow be <laughs> in this movie and and they're just who they are. You know, their dialogue is always on point. It always gives you this this wonderful sense of sure. of where they are and everything. And and they are such visual storytellers that they don't even have to, you know, they don't have to try nearly as hard as ninety five percent of other movies out there to convey what their story of their film is. They can they can tell it in as simple way as possible which is a real skill to have um and so yeah i think it's a it's a movie that's narratively unsatisfying but is all about the performance and the movie around the plot itself and i think that's where particularly for someone like adam where this movie has a changed has attained such cult status that if I hadn't seen it before, I would go in expecting this whiz bang, you know, kind of revolutionary, revelatory film. And beyond Javier Bardem's performance, it's not really that. What makes this what sets this movie apart is how it plays with your expectations of what it is going to be, and where it chooses to satisfy the audience storyline wise and where it chooses to kind of peter out in other ways too. Right. Um, yeah. The, the main, the main storyline of this movie is not what drives this movie. It's everything else that's kind of happening uh, in the background or the undertones of what things actually mean um, yeah. and that's kind of where you get this, uh, quite ambiguous ending, which we'll obviously talk about. Um, but yeah, this, I, I, you know, just, I, this is an awesome movie. Um, it's something that obviously, uh, I grew up on to an extent, nothing that I watched like a ton throughout my childhood, but like your first watch, you expect to just kind of watch it for what it is. And then your next watch, you're you're kind of looking around a little bit more, and you're like, "Oh fuck, this this is what it is." Um, right. So yeah, it's it's a uh, it's definitely worth a rewatch, but it, you know, just kind of staying out of anything too crazy. It's definitely um, it's definitely a recommend for me. Sorry to kind of chip in there and cut you off, Nathaniel. No, 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 you're fine, totally fine. Like I said, I always talk too much, anyways. So, um, you boys are always welcome to jump in whenever I'm talking. And, uh, yeah, it's a big recommend for me as well. Um, Adam, I sympathize with your position. I truly do. In, in terms of like, I can, okay. I can I'm understand. Glad I'm not crazy. No, like I can, <laughs> like, Thank you for confirming it. I think I, I truly think this is a, this is a scenario of like, this is a movie that is definitely like a, a, a film critic's favorite movie that somehow escaped into the general public and they're like no we all love this too but not for the reasons that normal film crit people <laughs> would like this movie as well too they they it's just known as a good movie kind of thing right right kind of like hereditary in that way i think in some ways yeah. where like the point okay. it's like it's like your film like your horror fans favorite horror movie but it also like somehow escaped into the normal audience where they're like this is really scary and really popular but like regular people are also just going to watch it and be like i don't get the hype on this <laughs> at all right. at all i don't understand yeah yeah <laughs> so anyways okay good i'm glad i'm not alone uh, and that other people are crazy not me no yeah i mean go out live your life uh for you know 10 years come back to it and <clears throat> see where you feel at that point I'll do just that. Um, 
I'm going to see if I can get convinced in the spoiler segment to, to like this more. So uh, join us if you have seen the movie. If you have not, check that episode description uh, where you can be taken over the spoilers to our ranking of the movie. Have a pun. Our entry list, Nathaniel. Spoiler yes. time, please. Spoilers. There was a, some chimes there. Not quite that level, but, you know, similar. So that shit goes down. I'm not wrong. You're wrong. <laughs> you're right. You're right. I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm wrong. You're right. But shit went down. And there's no country for old men. For old men. Um, is this movie scary? Uh, no, but it does have one of my favorite jump scares at the end. Because... When Which you one? see what are, what are the car accident. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So when you when you see that movie or not movie, when you see that scene now, you see the car coming, coming at from you. the other direction. Yeah. This is one of those times and one of the first times that I experienced it where the car is coming essentially from behind you yep. and you don't get to see it. Um, so that that's one of my uh kind of favorite things about that scene and i think that's really the only jump scare that that actually gets me that so. that is a ve- i will agree with you that's a very well shot scene because you're right typical car crashes uh, my favorite movie whiplash has one spoilers for that movie i guess uh <gasps> yeah, he has the camera in the passenger seat looking at the driver he's not looking to those left but lo and behold there's a car a semi truck or a, i don't know a pickup truck coming right for him and so it cuts that angle, and I was like, oh, that's weird. There's no car. And then still a car crash. <laughs> it kind of just throws you for a loop there. Uh, so it's not uh, wait, wait. the jump scare in the typical sense, but is it, that, it's very good. Is that the titular whiplash? What? <laughs> All right, we got to go watch the movie again. <laughs> um, um, really another... F- uh, another scene to yeah to, to to circle it back on no country for old men. Another scene that to Nathaniel's question like is is this movie scary? Um, there there are some scenes that play in it right. The car crash is one. The other scene I actually thoroughly enjoy is the scene where Josh Brolin as uh, character I forgot his character's name like what's his name again? Moss Llewellyn. Llewellyn yeah Llewellyn Moss, Moss. Yeah, Llewellyn. Llewellyn okay thank you. Um, where he finds the tracker. And the money, right? So then he mm-hmm. realized he's being tracked because then he kind of like backtracks his thoughts to the motel earlier, right? And then um, he's like, okay, well, I'm going to be prepared for this guy. And he's sitting there with the shotgun. And then you can see Antoine's character come up. Uh, then you see Josh Brown like look under there to see like the shoes. And then he walks over and turns the lights off, right? So like that's like a very kind of like horror sequence right for there. Sure. Um, yeah. Because you're like, oh, that. That was actually a little scary there. It turns it the lights off so you can't see his shadow. The next thing you know, um, he uses, I don't even know the the correct term for that thing, but the thing like you kill cattle with or they slaughter cattle with is probably the correct term. Yeah, yeah. That um, but how he's using that to open doors is fucking awesome, bro. I love I I forgot that part of the movie. I always remember the shotgun part, like the silent shotgun. Which is yeah. just insane. Um, oh, that's fucking <laughs> awesome, too. Dude, that, dude. I, yeah, I, yeah, I, I like, saw that the first time. I was like, that's <laughs> badass. <laughs> That was sure. <laughs> so, so yeah, that scene that scene had some horror elements for sure. Thanks. Yeah, the other one I always remember is obviously the gas station scene, which I mean, oh, that scene's so good. That may have my choice for like, like this is just how you do tension in mm-hmm. terms of just mm-hmm. it starts and they set that guy up as the nicest guy in the world, and he's just having a day making conversation mm. but he's made conversation with a fucking psychopath and yeah. <laughs> now all of a sudden everything is on the line and you have no idea and like javier Bedem's playing that thing at a 10 the guy who's talking to him is just yeah, the gas station attendant just trying to live his life and you can just see oh, him you know, pedaling off his back foot the whole time as it just comes, as it just, all he's doing is talking to him about flipping a coin, and it's the most riveting shit that you've ever seen in your entire life. Um, yeah. 
Gene Gene Jones is the gas station attendant, by the way. So there, there you go. <laughs> Shout out him. There you go. Shout out Gene Jones. Uh, Great name, by the way. But yeah, I also remember too like, Javier Bardem. Like they just they make him so weird. Like he's got he's got such a weird haircut. The haircut, he, yeah, the haircut does it. So the the so accent's weird. Like it's changing the whole time. Go ahead, Tyler. I was just gonna say he's he's death. Oh yeah, he's like, wearing he's wearing all black. His little haircut resembles a hood. Yeah, and instead yeah. of him carrying around this scythe, he's carrying around this, this cattle, cattle compressed John. air uh, thing that he just domes people with. Yeah, uh, like that's one of my favorite scenes. The guy on the side of the road, where he, oh, just, he sure. just walks up and just domes that dude. He's like, "Can you, uh, can you stand really quick, or can you stand still for a second, sir?" And just fucking puts. If it somebody's right in his putting that thing up to my head, I'm, I'm moving. Like, <laughs> you're not putting that thing anywhere close to my body. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, he's he. He's like a shark. Glimpses of like, him. He, he he he's like a he's like Jaws like he's just dead behind the eyes and he's just cruising from one space yeah. to another. He just wants just to kill anything or dudes. anything that can get in his way. And then and and, and, it's cool because he'll leave it up to chance. Yeah. Well, he's exactly um, what what the Woody Harrelson sometimes. Yeah, it's, he, sometimes it's exactly what the Woody Harrelson character says he is. He's got this weird code of laws that no one knows except him, and mm-hmm. they only matter in d- to him. To the point that he'll just kill the guy's wife because he said he was going to at some point, even though she had no responsibility or any part of it, really. Um, but that's getting in the weeds a little bit more. Anyways, yeah, I'll I'll I'll, I'll not talk for a minute. Adam, talk talk to me. Where where are your feelings here? I I was just I was under the impression for most of this movie. I was like, okay. It's on Medius Race. We're in the middle of this story. We just we just pick up in the in the desert, somewhere near the border. There's drugs involved. This dude's a kind of a cowboy. I'm into it. I'm into it. Understanding and hoping these stories typically get explained a little bit more towards the end. And I was like, all right, I can feel it coming. Like we're we're moving forward. And then and then he shows up in the motel room and kills Woody, Woody Harrelson. I'm like, mm. okay, that was odd. He's been in like three scenes and now he's dead. And then we don't even see who was our main character from my impression uh, die. They they kill him off screen, Yep. which is a very pointed choice, I understand. Um, but th- those two moments were, was where I was like, oh, we're not going to get a resolution to this. And I'm not going to get an understanding of what's going on fully. And I had to kind of spend the rest of the movie coming to terms with that. Um, and I, I still don't know if I fully have, uh, I think it would benefit me. A rewatch would benefit me greatly in, and then kind of appreciating what they're doing with the story and, and how they're structuring it. Uh, but upon first watch, I was just underwhelmed. I think I had different expectations of what this movie was going to be. Um, and it met them in some aspects, but it, it, it didn't in others. Um, I, was hoping for a resolution of some kind some kind i understand okay, that fair. might yeah. be the point of the movie and that's okay um my, my my issue isn't that they like didn't give us any resolution actually okay let me rephrase that it's it's not that there were everything you know all the bows weren't tied tight or anything and there's some loose ends it's just like the movie just kind of ends yeah that's the point and yeah, I get, I get that's, I get that's the point. It's definitely, it, I, if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, too, a like major case of blue balls, you know. Uh, yeah, if I'm not mistaken, <laughs> too, you are coming to this movie or coming to this review, like having finished the movie and less than an hour before you were reviewing it as well. Hundred percent right? correct. Right. Yes, yeah. this is. Uh, it was a six and a half hour drive followed by oh, about a six hour drive followed by a two hour movie followed by me putting um or plugging my laptop in my microphone and pressing record yeah so uh, so i will definitely say this is one that needs to marinate a little bit yes, as well too yes. um so what i will say is that like i think 
it's it is narratively unsatisfying and it's like and it's like and you're right it's like that on purpose it it is it is this i can tell this yeah. send up of the american tale i think to to the point of like you are where he's you know he's trying to convince himself well sugar he's he needs to watch out for me you know i'm the one that he mm-hmm. needs to take out for and i'm the one that he needs to be afraid of and they got you gearing mm-hmm. up with Tommy Lee Jones being on, you know, the right side of the law, coming down to protect him and everything. And no, it's it's the the third party that no one had been paying attention to or forgot about the whole time. The the drug owners themselves, the the cartel that yeah, come in right. and kill him eventually. And then there's nothing you can do about it. It's just it is what it is. As the Tommy Lee character says, you know, he doesn't understand it anymore. He has no control over it. It's just Mm, yep. is what it is if you get if you get past a certain point uh the country you know the 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 land doesn't care about you anymore you've you've right. outlived it your moves usefulness. on yeah it turns on you exactly live, i guess it's not quite live uh you either die a hero you live long enough to become a villain or it's just you either die a hero you live long enough to see things and not even want to be here anymore. I don't right. Know. <laughs> for, what, for what they really are, you know, right, in some right. ways as well too. Go yeah, ahead, Blake. I, I mean, one thing I, I would point out though, with, with Anton's character, I mean, it's, it's strange because even as Woody Harrelson, Carol, he does have kind of a, a code and a set of laws he abides to. And like the more you watch the film and on multiple occasions, you can pick up on those things. Right. So even like, as like the, the, um, gas station scene right with the clerk that's when everyone kind of talks about with the flipping the coin and he's kind of battering him a little bit but like that doesn't really start until the guy mentions his license plate and he knows how yeah like prior to that you'd probably argue you probably just would have left him alone but then like he also has to be aware like anybody who knows his whereabouts or kind of who he is probably gonna have to kill him right otherwise he's gonna end up being arrested um right so that kind of goes into I guess even Tyler's point of kind of the chance thing as well, where, I mean, it's, it's almost like he, some things are up to chance. Some things are just up to like fate, right? If you're just kind of like in the wrong place at the wrong time, right? Like the people who are working at the hotel that Josh Brolin's staying at, oh, yeah. they didn't do anything. Wrong place, wrong time. He walks in there. Unfortunately, he sees you see him. He's like, I'm, I, I'd have to do that. Right. Yep. Um, no, so I, that's a huge that theme of this even, movie is, is fate. Oh, and, sure. and, 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 absolutely and uh you know chance and how often violence is perpetrated you know in an, in a random manner and in an unlucky fashion yes and that's correct and that's the perfect reason why like even tyler mentioned that jump scare at the end that's the your point right there is it's, perfect for that any point exactly it's all chance it's, and it's completely 100 percent full circle it's for what sure. he's been preaching the entire movie it's what for he's sure. all about and oh, it's the, the only thing that can take him out sitting there like well right yeah and like you know the whole time you're sitting there and you're like this guy's invincible he's never gonna die and mm-hmm. and he's on he's untouchable um and then you know you you see him get hit by a car and it's just it's just chance that he so was in random. that intersection right. at that time. Um, and you know, he, <laughs> sir, you got a bone sticking out of your arm. <laughs> so, I'll give you $500 for the shirt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that was a good call back to, um, of, of paying for that shirt, I guess. Okay. So if we can leave it up to kind of the viewer, so, right. As even the, the director and then, um, and the crew want, right. So when he comes in and he, kills the accountant right yep. do you think he kills the other i don't want to say like secondary accountant but whoever the accountant's speaking to no. right like the other guy do you think he kills him when he's like are you gonna kill me he's like well it depends do, do you, you see, see me, me? Yeah. i guess yeah well what do you what do you guys think on that i think yeah. he stays alive because uh, of course your answer is like no i didn't see shit for sure <laughs> so. all right no see i think if you answer it that way you're already dead to him at that point. <laughs> like you need to like you need to you can't answer the way a normal person would in that situation you got to keep him intrigued for some reason you got to give him a reason to keep you alive at that point yeah um which gets me back to the point of like i kind of want to hash out like the sto- so the storyline of this movie 
which is kind of like always up in the air as well too like it's never it's never just nor laid out who what the, who the sides are and what's going on and everything so you have your josh brolin character who's out hunting comes across right. comes across a a drug deal that has gone bad that there seems to be right. a one side is from north of the border of the u.s south the other side is from the mexican border Shigur is dispatched by the American side to collect the money and for some reason figure out what's going on. But Josh Boland's character has has stumbled across with the money and run off during the meantime. So he's being pursued by both Shigur and the Mexicans. The Americans become upset that Shigur's killing people. And he has killed two more of their own that they hire Woody Harrelson to try and t- track down the money. Harrelson gets caught up in it and is eventually killed by Shigur as well. And then Brolin gets killed by the Mexican contingent. Shigur right. goes after his wife because he didn't bring him the money. And Tommy Lee Jones retires, who has been chasing them all the whole way just basically been a step behind the whole time i, I was gonna say yeah but he's a step behind every time so i mean he, yeah. he's got the right path right and he knows the events but he's can't which i think is time, right it's uh it's, it's fate again it's yeah and, happen, ta- and time right? back into that it, his time has just passed at this point and that you know even yeah, that's him a, at that, his best that's like part of his kind of line too you know he's just he's in it, this whole the whole time you're watching him on screen he's just struggling with the fact that he can't really keep up with the modern day criminal anymore. Right. And that's why he's trying to think about retiring and getting away. And then that's where like the whole dream sequence kind of comes in uh, at the end. Yeah, I think it's, um, but it is just, it's such a movie of details. It's such a movie, a, a, a movie of, of what's left unsaid of half the time the characters are talking but the the dialogue has nothing to do with the meaning of what they're behind it. Like they could be saying, you know, I'm gonna kill you, but they're saying, oh well, they're talking about something completely different. You know, <laughs> we're talking about coins right. or whatever. You know, um, that Coen Brothers dialogue is amazing. It movie looks amazing as well too. Shot by Roger Deakins, um, obviously a goat. Um, what was I gonna say? In the end, after when Tommy Lee goes back to the motel and he's creeping up on the door and you see Javier Bardem hiding behind the door and then he opens it up and Javier Bardem's not in there. Do you think he's in one of the other rooms or do you think that's just supposed to be representative of like what Tommy Lee fears? He doesn't know what's out there anymore and that's just what the manifestation is. That's the latter. really confused me. Um, I agree with Tyler. I think it's the latter. I think I think it's the latter. This movie is just it it's it's made around that. It, you're from beginning to end and you know when you kind of find yourself in the middle of things and you are on like your second watch, third watch, you're starting to kind of build your own thesis as to what's happening. It, like at the end you're kind of thinking about like just in your own yeah, thoughts you're like, like Maybe this happens. Maybe this happens. And so I think that's kind of, you know, one of the bigger parts. And um, yeah, you know, it just going along with Tommy Lee Jones's theme of, like I said, him not being able to keep up with the modern day criminal and and always kind of being a step behind. Um, I think that's that's why that makes sense to me for that just kind of being the symbol, the symbology behind the symbol of him not being there. What's the symbology? Uh, well, that and the um. <laughs> I can even like I think too like I don't think they ever actually I don't think anyone ever actually makes the connection that the the what tool he is using to kill people and to open all the doors he taught Tommy Lee Jones talks about it to the to the wife and just says oh he there was mm-hmm. this thing that people used to use or what they do use nowadays but he never actually makes the connection between the two of you the audience does that for him that that's what right. that that he knows what it's called, but he just can't 
make the connection himself or, or you know that that's what he's using or anything like that and again i think that goes back to that whole time is slipping past slipping him by so yeah i mean adam in response to your thing this is a movie i think i've had to grapple with as well too a, a little bit in some ways and that it does take you know as kind of the boys have said a little bit of time to um sit through and and, and a couple rewatches in some ways you should watch more Cohen Brothers. I do want to watch more Cohen Brothers. That's hundred percent true. I will it's, say the writing the writing in this film is awesome. Every scene, very well written. The the one on one scenes, especially with Antonio Bardem and the the gas station scene or oh, whatever sad. it is. That's Any sad. anytime he's like just individually with somebody, I'm on edge. Yeah. And that scene is good too, because that's the first time we get to see um Anton back on camera for I don't know, it's there's maybe like a thirty minute gap kind of between that right it just mm-hmm. kind of pops up at the gas station and you kind of see what's going on they're discussing um then things just go south so quick when he points out his license plate but it's it's so good and he was like and then as the gas station clerk is kind of like realizing like this guy's fucking insane like as i'm talking to yeah. him, he's like, all right well i'm gonna have to close down then he's like well what time do you close and he's like uh right now and he's like well no. now it's not a time <laughs> you know and it's just like it's yeah. so he's, he's just nitpicking him and he's he's egging him on so much and you can see the guy is so uncomfortable because that would be a terrible position to be in. Right. If well, a stranger especially is talking there. to you like that. Like my oh, man's just sure. my man's has never encountered somebody like him before. Like no, no way. one's ever re asked him a question like that or no like way. followed yeah. up with like a well, that's not a tie. <laughs> but in it what also makes it even more psychotic is that he it's not like he's ever saying it in a rude manner. Sitting no. here eating peanuts the entire time in the most creepy fashion like one by one <laughs> yeah. he's eating peanuts and chewing them while talking it's it's so unsettling yeah, it's, but it's it, it's it, a master class of tension it's like you said there's something about like the fact like none of his guns are uh, have like are normal they all have some sort of silencer on them he doesn't use a normal like he doesn't use a gun to kill people he uses this weird like implement he's just got a pocket full of coins and seems to just be wearing a jumpsuit wherever he goes like he's just weird it's just an awkward character and then yeah he doesn't talk the same language as everyone else does where they're they're all used to this kind of social niceties and all these kind of things as Mm -hmm. protection and he's just no he's just on his own own programming as as harrelson says a couple different times and like yeah like the other thing too they don't Woody Harrelson just shows up, but all the context for his character and who he is and everything, you pick up around it. Where, like, you know, I think he, one of the deputies comes up to him and is like, Oh, yeah, that person in the hotel, he was a retired army colonel. So that's why he's asking Brolin about um, if he ever served in Nam or whatever and oh, all that yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. stuff, you know. Um, I don't know. I think it's just a, it's a movie that is, is just about what's happening. Uh, just about as much what's happening not on screen as what is happening on screen as well too. So, thanks. Is this your is this your favorite Coen Brothers movie? Mine, no, no, mine still. Anyone's. Um, I think mine for uh, a long I think time. I've only seen two of them. Go ahead, Nathan. Uh, Old brother with art. Well, Old brother where art thou? It's gonna be a tough one for me to beat. I really like that one. I've not seen that one. It's funny. I've seen Big Lebowski. That's classic too. Yeah, fuck man. Um and True Grit. All both in this. Both great choices. Big Lebowski. Yeah, those, yeah those no. oh, I don't know. True Grit was uh, Coen Brothers. The remake yeah. is the original, obviously, isn't? Yeah. Oh, okay. Right. That's right. that's, that's right. why. I got it. That's right. Yeah. 2010. Cool. Which I think also has Brolin Wait. in it, doesn't it? Uh that I don't know. I don't remember. I cannot recall. I think he is in that one. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, I I haven't seen any of those. I've actually only seen Country for Old Men and After Reading. Oh um, yeah. So yeah, which I think I told you guys my funny story of Burn After Reading because I think I actually watched that after me listening to Wiz Khalifa a lot in high school and growing up on that. And <laughs> I realized the cover art for one of his mixtapes, uh, it's called Burn After Rolling, is actually a hey. Burn After Reading <laughs> movie poster, and like that came to, I I realized that and. I don't know. No, actually, that probably couldn't have been more than like four years ago, five years That's ago, dope. which is a complete mind fuck. It was awesome. Well, should we wrap this bad boy up? Get it ranked? 
Uh, yeah, uh, real quick, I just want to say uh, a couple of things. Is, of course. Is Tommy Lee Jones, Nathan Fillion uh, from Guardians, and, and Garrett Dillahunt is his idiot? <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's I, just fucking, I love time. Yeah. What does he say? Probably, maybe. Probably yeah. so. <laughs> when I've he's got like, one of those. Yeah. When, what does he say? He's like, we gotta tell somebody. You wanna tell him we're looking for a man? <laughs> like, <laughs> who drank milk? <laughs> yeah. Who might have drank milk. <laughs> uh so yeah, I had to I had to bring that up. And then um one of my favorite things about um Javier when you really kind of get to see into his character and, and kind of how we've been talking about this code and how methodical he really is, is when he's at the motel, but before he leaves his room, he takes off his boots. So he's quieter when he's walking mm. around and oh, he's yeah. not noticed. And oh, yeah. so it's just one of those cool things. Like again, just the attention to detail um, and, and how yeah, smart his character actually is throughout all this is, is pretty crazy. The other one I like is when uh, Josh Brolin closes the window and then he comes back and sees it's partly open and that's how he knows someone's inside. Mm-hmm. That was yep. another good, uh, good uh, little touch. I mean, uh, favorite. Uh, oh, go ahead, Nathaniel. I think for me, the like kind of most brutal or, or sort of thing is the is the t- uh, Llewellyn's wife, Carla Jean when mm. uh he shows up at the end and you're you talking to her and he you know obviously says you know i'll give you the coin flip that's you know all i can tell you and then it cuts to the outside and you see him walk outside and you don't see anything else but you just see him check the bottom of his shoes and if you've been mm-hmm. paying attention you realize he never gets blood on his shoes and that's what he's always checking and it tells yep. you everything you need to know and then that goes directly into the car crash sequence and then like that's that that's all one shot there are so many scenes in this movie that start so but like banally just just so normally they all feel like they just come out of nowhere and i feel like that is partially the theme that again we've been talking about with just chance and fate is, is that all these kind of violent moments and violent pieces of the movie itself are there if you're paying attention but a lot of times they just do just pop up uh, completely unexpectedly as well, too, just like in life. Yeah. Um, one of my kind of favorite scenes uh, outside of the gas station one and, and outside of kind of the, the creeping under the door one where they cut the lights off um, is actually where Anton's character um, breaks into the motel where you see Josh Brown's character is like probably like a room or two over. And the mm. vent trying to get the money out, and he breaks in. Then he just like completely shotguns the first guy, right? And he's right. like bleeding out. Then the guy jumps out the bathroom with like a Uzi, yeah. And he shotguns him. And then there's the guy. Uh, he sees the guy through the mirror, hiding yeah. in the shower. Mm-hmm. And the guy's like terrified, like, "Hey, like, I don't have anything to do with this, right?" Then he just closes the shower curtain, so it covers him, and then he shoots him through the shower curtain. Um, yeah, man, that's just that, that's, that's a an good awesome touch shot, for sure. As Nathaniel said, he doesn't want to get blood on his clothes. Yeah. Either would I. He's a bad, bad man. Let's put it on the list. Let's do it. Uh, Welcome back, listeners who skipped over the spoiler segment of the podcast. We're going to go ahead and throw No Country for Old Men upon our entropy list, our big list of all the movies we reviewed compared to one another, which is typically how we rate our movies. Uh, If you want to see the entropy list for yourself, you can do so by checking the episode description. Um, dumb ways to die dude that wasn't stuck in my head a week ago i'm not even kidding i sang it for three days straight <laughs> prepare for three more oh jesus come on no country for old men there you are this is uh Entry 145 <laughs> on the entropy list. Can you believe it? I've got my spot. I also have my spot. You've got a spot? I've got a spot. All right. Let me see. What's your uh, spot? Where are you working? Where are you working? Uh, I am going to go at 
26. Ooh. Below Back to the Future, above Avatar 2, Too Wet, Too Blue. Electric six, you say. I'm going to be a little lower. I am at 29. The only movie below this that I can see immediately that I think should be maybe above this or at least very close to it is Kill Bill. Yep. That's, yeah. That's what I was gonna say but everything movie. else I think is reasonably placed under this. Yeah, I was. I'm. I'm with you, bro. I was kind of looking at the same thing. And I've seen. Woo. That one hurts me, but that hurts me every time. So I think I'm. I'm starting to get numb to the pain. So I mean, kind of looking <laughs> here, I think I'm rolling. I can see you being a little bit higher because I don't see you caring for Starship Troopers. Right. So that's not a cat Avatar. For me. You're definitely right. Back to the Future. Yeah. I know you is probably good. I think you're going to be like right at like, I bet you're, if I had to guess, <laughs> if I'll I had tell to you exactly where to go. You, yeah, you'd be at you 24 that? or 25. This isn't going above T2 for you. Dune is kind of on the fence, but I think you might like this better than Back to the Future. Yeah, so that's kind of what I was looking at going through. I, see, I saw T2 and I was like, Ooh, I think I'm... <laughs> in terms of if both of these, if I had to click anything, both of these came up, I think I'm leaning towards clicking T2 just for the replay value and how fluid that film is and how easily watchable it is. Um, so I think that would probably be my cap. But then like I see the Batman and I'm like, oh man, I think I'd probably watch this over the Batman. So uh, I guess long story short, though, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna place it at 24. So I'm gonna go over Dune and below T2. Damn. I'm by far the lowest, but I'm not dramatically lower. Um, I think I'll. I think I'm gonna slot this at 36. Right below Training Day and above the Northman. And that's a good place for you because I was wondering where you were placing this in, right? Because not kind of the same movie, but like a, a little bit in terms of like a great portrayal and a great mm -hmm. role portrayal, right? Between Denzel and um, I already forgot my boy's Javier. Um, so like I was curious, like, oh, I wonder what Adam likes a little bit more. I thought you'd be a little bit higher on Training Day because I think um, just kind of remembering that that episode, you. Seemed a little more energetic about that one. Definitely still, more energetic about still. that film. Uh, and that's a similar one right. where it's like, that's one I've heard about. I had, sure. I, that's, I had I expectations and it met those. And that's why um, I kind of like it more. I think this could definitely go up with the rewatch and now that we've talked it over. Um, so I'm, you know, this, the, I do feel bad that this is probably, this being my first watch 16 years after the buzz of the film itself uh, has kind of subsided. I, I I think that does it a disservice for our ranking here because I just can't enjoy it to the level I think you guys do. That'll change probably as I watch it more. That being said, with all of our rankings in, uh, we get an average rating of 28.75, meaning we do have to tie break it with Starship Troopers. Do we want to do a back row tie break before I'm we check above. IMDb? Starship is above this, but I, I I vote below. Starship Troopers should remain above this movie. Nathaniel, it looks like uh, you hold the key to either a tiebreaker that will lead us to IMDb or a non tiebreaker. Wait, so because we're going to pick the squad. Tyler and Adam are saying that Starship Troopers are twenty eight. This is twenty nine, and you're saying opposite. Correct. Correct. Uh. I don't know, man. I feel like IMDb is going to put uh, Starship Troopers. I don't Troopers. know, man. I don't know, man. Hey, Starship Troopers is actually pretty high in IMDb. Yeah, but... If uh, I remember correctly. If I remember awesome right, the, the IMDb... No Country for Old Men, though, has got to be like a... Yeah. I will have it be known, No Country for Old Men does win the IMDb tiebreak. Yeah, Starship Troopers 7.3 7. versus an 8.2 for mm. No Country. Yeah, I think I will go with No Country. And also because then puts John Wick 4 above No Country, and that's very funny visually as well, too. So, uh, No Country at 28, Starship at 29. 
is my vote. Ooh, I'm, that's pain for me, but I'll take it. I, I guess I'll just move on. I'm okay with it. I think I'm okay the with the value too. of Starship Troopers is significantly higher. Like well, I, I think watch that like easily once a year. Both of There's these. Less- both Blood of these yeah. in the country. The, not gonna lie, fellas, I don't think I will ever watch Starship Troopers. They're crazy. Oh, crazy. that's that's. I, I think blasphemous. I think both of these are uniquely American movies as well, too. Like, <laughs> yeah. No Country for well, Old Men. Well, kudos to Adam. He put uh, two psychopaths right next to each other, sure. and they both won Oscars, if I believe so. So, sure. like, kudos to you, Adam. Thank you. I thought yeah, Adam's hard cap was be, uh, <laughs> original John Wick at forty. Mm. Mm. Um, that was that. tough. I did I did see that one, um, but I had to just kind of let it slide because Northman, I feel like, is a little too high, and I do think I'll respect this movie enough to put it over, like, The Conjuring and Spirited Away and Black Hawk Down. Even those are all great movies. Yeah. I think this one has stood the test of time for most people, it seems. I mean, you guys are as high as... Blake was as high as 24, so... Um, I can't pretend like people are crazy and it was just, you know, a movie that came around at the time. I definitely, and I definitely see the appeal, especially after we talked it through. One of the all time so. desert movies. Love this movie. Yeah, and, of course. And how it should Who do you all think uh, portrayed a psychopath better? Do we think it's Denzel? Uh, no, it's, 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 it's Sugar. Sugar is just straight up crazy. Like, yeah, he's, um, he's more of the psychopath. I think, um, Denzel is more on the the corrupted side of things. He's okay. he's a product of his environment. Um, mm. He is that way because of how jaded he's become through the job. I think mm. Anton was just fucking born that way. He's just a fucking psychopath. If, I, if yeah, I'm not mistaken, really they've had like they've done one of those things where they like analyze 330 psychopaths and like film and movies and stuff and like sugar is always the like number one like this is the closest you get to a, <laughs> what a real life lunatic like this actually operates like how a, a true yeah psychopath. i did some reading on that yeah terrifying but that's art it's true Indeed it is well, we have No Country for Old Men slotted in at 28 below John Wick Chapter 4 and above Starship Troopers. Uh, Nathaniel, do we have a five star? We do oh, not. No, no, that's not where we go to. That's not where we go to. Our next review. What is our next review? I didn't look at it yet. Uh, Unfortunately, I think it's fucking fast. It is fast 10. 10, fellas. Fasten. Did we decide fasten. to skip it? Fasten your seatbelt. Fasten. Is that what we're going for? Yep. Yeah, it, is fast. it is fast yeah. time did we decide do we want to skip over it can we please switch that? Uh, <laughs> I, I i i'll go either way please. i'll go either way yeah, i will be there i'm up to you boys i will be seeing we- the fast 10 but I all right let's just do convinced. fast 10 why not Boy. start like you have a list it's not like you're spending a lot of money yeah, that's true. <laughs> Blake's like, I'm gonna do a bit of sizzle this week. You will not see me <laughs> <laughs> next week. Overall, uh, all right. So, we're how, watching... how long do you guys think that movie is? Uh, I mean, we can. I think it's got to be fucking two forty, bro. Guaranteed. I hope not. Oh I think no! We're, I think it's we're selling short. If we're looking under two. <laughs> it's two fifty. It's two twenty. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's 250 oh, Blake's like oh no they're going in the wrong direction <laughs> <laughs> all right well it won't be too bad I think I gotta Maybe watch it's entertaining I gotta watch It'll the ninth one I gotta prep myself I don't even remember what's happening Maybe that's the point. You're not supposed to at this point. I haven't seen Fast Nine since I don't think there are theaters, but I don't think most people have. So I'll be Fair we'll enough. be fine. It's all about family. That's all you need to know. It's true. And true. and, uh, and uh, what's his face is dead. What's his character's name? John, John Ryan. Cena? Yeah, yeah. Paul Walker. Walker. Ryan Spilner. He's not dead. Not in the. Not in the. <laughs> okay, fine. Uh, sorry. Yes, Paul Walker has passed. He's no longer there. Uh, all right, we'll move on here. Uh, Nathaniel, five star review. No five star reviews, yeah, but if you yeah, want to yeah, give yeah. us a five star review, you can do so in app on Apple Podcasts, and we will read it out for you. Whether it is mean, whether it is nice, whether it is funny, just don't be evil. You can say whatever you'd like. Thank you so much. It helps us grow, and grow is what we want to do. So yeah, 
share the podcast. That helps us the most. Or uh, word of mouth. That helps too. Yeah. Adam? Uh, let's see. Do we have any emails? I'm checking right now. For some reason, I'm signed out of the Backer Banter Pod account. Um, no, we do not. So, if you want to send us an email, another way to get it read out on the pod, uh, send us an email at backerbanterpod at gmail.com. Please do share the podcast. Share with a friend, family member. Uh, maybe. Uh, 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 I don't know. Nathaniel, give me one this week. It's been a long week for me. Uh, what if, else should they share it with? Should you find yeah. some money out in the desert uh, and you decide to share that or buy some stuff with it, you know, tell them about the podcast too. Let them know. Oh, let them know. Um, yeah, do that. Follow us on Twitter as well at Banter Row on Instagram at Backer Banter Pod and our YouTube. We're just Back Row Banter, short and sweet. Blake Holder, where can the people find you at, my man? Uh, letterboxed Blake Holder. I'll be on there. Log things. Uh, I'm out of five stars. Putting a review down if I have any um, serious thoughts about it. So maybe I'll put something down for No Country for Old Men. Uh, one thing I would challenge people to do, though, uh, since we did just review No Country for Old Men, is um, if you like that same setting and kind of the same ideology and the themes of kind of the cartel, drug trade, how things are out of our control, even though we get the local police involved, uh, go watch Sicario. That also has Josh Brolin. Um, directed by Denny V, who we've given a lot of flowers to, and I would argue would probably fall somewhere around the same place on the entry list, so it's a damn good film. But that's all I got. We'll go to, uh, let's go to Adam. Yeah, you can find me on Twitter at H24, on Letterboxd at H, and on Twitch. It's twitch.tv slash H. Uh, I just graduated college. Congrats! Hey! Yeah. Yeah. I think we got that going. I Did we get it going? Tell. Okay. There it didn't come through, but it never does. Uh, yeah, thanks, guys. It's uh, In some ways, it's been a long four years. In some ways, it doesn't feel as like, feel like four years has passed at all. Uh, it's weird. It's very, very weird feeling. And uh, now i got to get a real job. Become a big boy. Just like Pinocchio never could, you know? Yep. Yeah. Eventually, they'll hit you with uh, those student loans. <laughs> they so will. That is that, what is, isn't that um, like a year after you finish? No, I think six it's months. like September. Yeah, six months. Yeah, they don't really oh, give shit, me much time. Fast. Yeah, they don't really give me <laughs> much time. Uh, it might be later than that. I don't know. Uh, Shout out the government. I gotta figure all that out, but I'll get to, I'll get around to it. Anyway, uh, yeah. So that's some uh, exciting life news for me. My life has ended. That's what it is. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Or is it uh, just beginning? Or it, it is just beginning. I know all that. I'm just being. Being a little dramatic, but no, I'm very excited for the future. It's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be weird because I just know two years from now, I'm, my life could look completely different. I have no idea what's gonna happen. So uh, I'm kind of just holding on for the ride. It'll be fun. Hopefully, Tyler, Twitch. Twitch. Even yeah. though I'm not streaming right now, you can still find some of my old stuff there. Um, that's ultrabajo eighty seven. And then uh, Instagram, Letterbox, and Twitter are all Tyler Vidalis, V I D A L E S. Is that it? Is that everybody? That's it. Can we say bye? That's the gang. Let's say yeah. bye. I believe that's it. Thank you all for joining us for episode 146. Uh, thank you all for listening, especially if you made it this far into the episode. Join us for our review of Fast 10X. Fast 10X uh, next week. We'll BRB. Be excellent to each other, everyone. And we will BRB. Thanks for stopping by. We appreciate everything you can and will do to help us grow. Uh, you know what? Go see this movie because then we can all, you know, hopefully trash it together and, um, you know, uh, never talk about it again after next week. Also, uh, real quick, shout out uh, Gundy. Happy birthday. Um, Happy birthday, you're, Gun. uh, you're a beast through and through. And, um, yeah, hope you had a good day. Uh, other than that, uh, just tell somebody you love them, and we will be RB. Uh, thanks for the support. Thanks for listening. As always, we appreciate you, uh, wherever you're listening at or wherever country you're located in. Um, I believe the last time I shouted out uh, our fan in Denmark, so this time I'll shout out uh, whoever's listening in Canada. Looks like it's a group of you all, but thank you. Hey. We appreciate it. Um, outside of that, yeah, as we always say, at least try to do one thing you thoroughly enjoy every day. Um, that'll probably make your day 
a little bit better. So we'll be our beef.